Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? DEI gets dropped, Biden gets bounced, and the truth about the Trump shooting. <laughs> Boom! So what the heck's going on? We missed Wednesday because it was the big Sig Tig's birthday. So anyone wants to drop a birthday message down in the comments, much appreciated. Let's rock. What's cracking? Boom! Well, before we get into DEI getting dropped, Microsoft dropped the ball on their CrowdStrike or whatever it's called. Uh, some sort of update they were doing. And uh, flights are grounded. Travelers stranded, including JFK and LaGuardia, after tech outage cripples banks and other companies around the globe. Yeah, so what's going on there? Basically, there were some sort of update was supposed to be occurring, and uh, it got all jacked up, and it didn't work. Failed tech update. The global crisis was triggered when the U.S. cybersecurity company CrowdStrike deployed a faulty software update to computers running Microsoft Windows overnight, crashing them and leaving the ominous so-called blue screen of death. And there you have it. So everyone is all jacked up. Good job, Microsoft. Well, uh, they're doing one thing right. Uh, they scrapped their DEI initiatives, citing business needs. Yeah. People aren't buying your product, and they're protesting because of all the garbage you're spewing out there and the poor hires. Like, DEI didn't earn it is the nickname on it but what it originally was was diversity equity and inclusion so a diverse workforce that is all equal and uh, includes every possible facet of human nature will be the best no questions asked just stick with it that's the deal all right well uh, it turns out it's not true and many of these companies that have gone woke have uh you know gone broke so they eliminate the DEI team due to changing business needs. The email announcement, team leaders email highlighted the DEI programs no longer seen as business critical. But they were. They were totally critical before, but not anymore. There you go. And John Deere gets the memo as well. They release a statement rejecting DEI policies committed to our customers. Excellent. Uh, there is some stuff floating around there about uh, how they celebrated their Pride Month. And uh, they literally, ha I don't know, you should see the flag. Just type in John Deere Pride Month flag. And it's like, they, I don't even know if it's real. They might have made it up. So moving right along, what do we have here? Uh, what started as the Romanian revolt in Leeds let masked people from Bucharest come because we will tear them down too. Yeah, okay, so uh, I don't know if you guys are on Twitter or not, but there was uh, a bunch of stuff going on in Leeds. Police cars on fire, buses on fire, everyone's freaking out. Well, social services took five children from their parents after a seventh-month-old baby was taken to hospital with a head injury. They attacked the police and set fire to things. There you go. So uh, the Romani people all got together, banded together, got on like a, whatever app they have, message and said, let's go, let's take them out. They took our kids. And everyone was like, nah, we don't play. So, uh, yeah, they're going to go ahead and revolt that. Will they get arrested? We'll see. They chased all of the police out. What else? You eliminate him and look at the violent rhetoric against Donald Trump. So what led potentially to the uh, assassination attempt on Donald Trump? Off with his head. Hollywood celebrities reacted outraged Trump's shock defeat of Hillary Clinton in 2016. Uh, take him out. Trump needs to be eliminated. Congressman Dan Goldman. A threat to democracy. That's something we hear being played over and over. Stripped of protection. Rapper uh, Benny Thompson got his way. Trump would have no Secret Service protection. Yeah, they tried to do that. Yeah, so that's just a little bit of the stuff. Uh, the Trump rally upends the Democrats' Biden crisis. Yeah. If you don't know what's going on, they were trying to get Biden to drop out of the race. They're like, oh, no, uh, he's probably not going to win. The debate was really bad. Everyone's realizing that he's not there. We can't hide it anymore. Uh, what do we do? And they're like, let's get him out of here. Well, uh, the Trump shooting happened, and then everyone was like, 
Well, what do we do now? Well, guess what? It's rearing its ugly head. Scoop comes in. Biden rebellion resurfaces on Capitol Hill. Schumer is behind the scenes. Pelosi, even Barack Obama is behind the scenes saying, we got to get this guy out of here. He's totally making us look like fools. How can we, how can we do it? Well, Biden came out and said he would consider dropping out if a medical condition emerges. This quote is currently the top headline on Drudge. Democrats still obsessed with removing Biden from the ticket. And uh, guess what? Following day, Biden tests positive for COVID. Shortens Las Vegas trip. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Maybe they're all thinking like he's triple vaccinated. You know, maybe we'll, they'll slide one through that uh, safe and effective vaccination that he had. And uh, maybe they'll, he won't be able to run. He'll get too sick. He'll get that long COVID and just won't be able to emerge from his basement. Well, we'll see. Breaking news. Multiples sources online. The apparent state of play on Biden at this time plans to announce withdrawal from nomination as early as this weekend, with Sunday most likely. Well, maybe we're going to have a breaking news episode on Sunday. John Meacham polishing up his remarks. Biden will not resign the pre presidency. Biden will not endorse Harris. So he's not going to resign. He's just going to refuse the nomination or not seek nomination for the following election open convention with Harris and about three others. So I guess they're considering who's going to run, perhaps Newsom. We'll see. Gretchen Whitmer's name's being thrown around there. Superdelegates will not be allowed to vote on the first ballot. Harris is vetting at least four possible running mates, including Andy Bashir and possibly Shapiro. Ben Shapiro? <laughs> Unlikely. Uh, more on this fluid situation. Yeah. All right. Very interesting. Thomas Matthew Crooks was spotted on roof by law enforcement nearly 30 minutes before the attempted Trump assassination. This is a report. Uh, yeah, there is video footage uh, now that has seen him walking around with his range finder. What I find interesting is that they keep showing this photo here that I don't believe is current. It feels like it's uh, from high school. And he's 20, so he would have graduated two to three years ago, depending on his exact date of his birthday. All right, so, yeah, he was spotted around. Also, his parents called the cops. What? On the day of the Trump rally shooting? Really? Well, the parents of Donald Trump would-be assassin Thomas Matthew Crooks called the cops the day he went missing before the shooting. Sorry, the day he was missing a bombshell new report claims. It follows another stunning development that the 20-year-old gunman was at the former president's rally three hours before opening fire and sparked the suspicions of the Secret Service because he was carrying a rangefinder used by hunters to take long shots. What? I heard it was also a, a golf range finder as well. They're all trying to downplay this. You gotta listen to the verbiage sometimes of these different uh, news outlets. He climbed onto a roof, shot Trump, and killed retired volunteer fire chief Corey Comparatori at the rally. There's some interesting things coming out about that as well. Uh, companies that he worked for. Crooks told his boss that he needed the day off from work Saturday and gave colleagues a final chilling message that uh, he would be back on Sunday. Yeah, so chilling. Yeah, I'll be back. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Terminator 2 there. And he got terminated. Uh, Fox has learned that senators were told in an all-member briefing today that Thomas Crooks wrote on a gaming platform called Steam, July 13th will be my premiere. Watch as it unfolds. Well, it was also his uh, finale as well. When investigators reviewed the laptop, they found a few searches in July of Trump, Biden, when is the DNC convention, and July 13th Trump rally. Investigators have found no evidence of particular ideology, which FBI believes is notable, and nobody in interviews reported crooks discussing politics. That's not true. There was one gentleman who said he hated Trump. Uh, suspect has two cell phones. Primary phone was recovered from the scene along with a remote transmitter, a detonator, which a lot of people have come out and said this, like, crazy technology to be able to pull off a remote detonation of an improvised explosive device a lot of questions secondary cell phone was found at home it only had 27 contacts that's not unusual for someone who's not very popular and the fbi is in the process of tracking down and interviewing those people all right what else? Thomas Crooks hit a rifle in advance of the Trump rally sniper attack, Secret Service sources say. So yeah, a lot of people were questioning, how would you even enter with a rangefinder and a backpack? Isn't that suspicious enough to deny someone access? Well, 
Obviously, uh, how would you get the rifle in there? Well, they believe that he had disassembled it and stashed it previously. How they uh, have come to that conclusion, I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, it was not immediately clear uh, where he hit it. However, by the time agents spotted him on the roof, he was already holding it. We went from golf range finder, see that, to AR-15, and now we have to fill in the gap. Yeah, and there they are on the roof. There was also footage of the FBI the following day up there with a pressure washer washing all of the blood uh, from the roof, which is a little bit interesting the day after, you know. When authorities first observed Crooks carrying a golf range finder Saturday, he was perceived as a person of interest, but not a threat. Not until he was found with a weapon. Of course, now he's listed as threat, obviously. Right here. An official threat. There were four counter snipers stationed around the rally, according to the Secret Service, two from the agency and two provided by local law enforcement. There has been conflicting reports that it was local law enforcement that took the kill shot, uh, as well as the Secret Service, so um, we'll see. A federal sharpshooter fatally struck the gunman seconds after gunfire erupted, so this is what Fox News is reporting. I also heard reports that it was the local sharpshooter. Crooks struck at least four people with the AR-15 uh, fire from the rooftop, killing 50-year-old father of two named Corey Commodore and seriously wounding David Dutch and James Copenhaver. Authorities have spent much this week pointing fingers about who is responsible for securing the AGR building from where Crooks opened fire. Yeah, Secret Service, well, we'll see what they had to say. Congressman Mike Waltz said, according to the FBI briefing, the Trump shooter had three encrypted accounts overseas. What? At the same time, we're uh, hearing the Iranians are plotting against Trump. So that's another thing that came out. The uh, Secret Service said, well, uh, listen, we heard that there was an Iranian plot against Trump, so we beefed up security. <laughs> but you ultimately failed, clearly. So what else is going on? Secret Service boss blames sloped roof for not putting sniper team on building used by would-be Trump assassin. Which is insane, because if you look at the roof and the slope uh, that the others were on... It was way more sloped. There, I, I don't have a picture, unfortunately. But uh, you can't get on the roof, but you identify the building as a threat. So what's the excuse for not securing the perimeter and all access points of the building roof? Well, they said it was uh, too dangerous. Too much of a slope at its highest peak. Which is absolutely ridiculous from Cheadle. Cheadle's angels. Sheriff says building used by shooter wasn't our responsibility. So local police comes in and says, listen, we were given the... Uh, the parameters that we were meant to secure, we were inside the building, we had our staging area set up in that building, but we didn't have anyone outside looking up at the roof. That wasn't us, okay? That was the Secret Service. And they have, like, the report there. They can. I'm sure it'll be submitted into evidence when all this goes into Congress. It's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle landed job after push by Jim Bi Jill Biden's office, sources say. Interesting. So we have Cheadle's angels there, blundering fools. Cheadle 53 is the second woman to lead the Presidential Protection Agency and secure the non-Senate confirmed role in August 2022 after a three-year stand as Senior Director of Global Security at PepsiCo. Protecting all those Cheetos, I guess. Before that, she had served 27 years at Secret Service. I mean, like, she's, you know, it's not that she's undeserving of this position necessarily, but if she was like, you know, coaxed along by the first lady because she feels DEI is very important, then this lady definitely didn't earn it. New visualization shows just how Donald Trump, how close Donald Trump was from losing his life during the uh, Pennsylvania rally. All right, let's, uh, yeah, let's have a look at this. All right, Trump says he turned his head at the last moment to look at the illegal immigration statistics that were on the big screen. The chart that I was going over saved my life, Trump reportedly said to former White House Dr. Ronnie Jackson. The Border Patrol saved my life. Hilarious, isn't that funny? Thank you, my orcas. If I hadn't pointed at that chart and turned my head to look at it, that bullet would have hit me right in the head. And here's a graphic that was uh, designed showing the trajectory of the bullet and also the... Uh, Trump, just have a look. Take a look what happened. Take a look what happened. Now the trajectory of the other two bullets or three bullets, whatever it was, likely weren't 
that same. So it just gives you an idea of how close it was. Here's another view, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, this here was also lined up. Check it out. The assassin's bullet was perfectly centered until President Trump tilts his head and leans into the microphone at the last second. Have a look at this. Boom. Unbelievable. So, I mean, whether it's completely accurate or not, it just gives you a visual of exactly what was happening there and what to look at. A lot of people said... God intervened. God was with them. Like, for all of the mistakes that were going on around, all the blunders, whether intentional or not, the fact that it literally just didn't work out is crazy. All right, from the rooftop of this building, he likely had a clear view. All right, let's go. Uh, let's just zoom in here. Someone created this graphic here. Who was it? The bird's eye view of the scene. Uh, this could be the New York Post, potentially. Or no, uh, news, whatever. 3D model offers clues. All right, let's check this out. Zooming in, this is a bird's eye view of the scene. Okay, so here's where Donald Trump would have been standing. Okay, this is the roof where the individual was. There's also a water tower over here somewhere people are talking about. Let's just zoom in. We recreated the podium where Trump delivered. Zooming in. Look at this, beautiful. All right, so here is Trump right here. Okay, you'd see the podium. This orange bubble, that is the location of Crooks. Then we have these two locations of the counter snipers. Secret Service closest, okay? And the local PD uh, farther away. We don't know the exact views they have. You can see there could be a tree here that may have obstructed the view of the Secret Service. Okay, just zooming around to the other side here. This is the view that Thomas would have had. You can see the line of sight towards Trump's podium, the line of sight of the Secret Service and the local sniper unit. See the clear view of Trump and then some cover from the pitch. The pitch that was way too dangerous for any Secret Service agent to be on. And there is the next President of the United States all right, so what else is going on here? There's video of him you can see when he was on the pitch. All right, moving right along. Boom, here is a view, check this out, of the shooter 458 feet away from Trump, and then you have the two counter sniper teams there on this visual, okay? Keep it on, just, just remember this visual. Okay, I'll come back to that, actually. Sniper spotted Trump gunman one hour before shooting and captured bombshell photo. Secret Service officials had would-be assassin Thomas Matthew Crooks under surveillance for over 40 minutes before he shot at Donald Trump. A newly released image reveals the photograph taken during Butler, Pennsylvania rally on July 14th shows the 20-year-old gunman crawling on the ground while scanning the area. The suspicious activity was reported to law enforcement at 5.30 p.m. At around 6.20, 11, sorry, Crooks positioned himself on a slanted warehouse roof and fired at Trump from a distance of approximately 165 yards, wounding him in the ear and killing retired Fire Chief Corey Combatory. So here you can see again the image. Check it out. Right? Direct line of sight towards Trump. Corey Combatory was in that line of fire. So apparently a bullet went into Combatory. Maybe the first bullet, the second bullet would have hit Trump. Again, who was the woman behind Trump here? A lot of people are stating that this is an FBI agent. Um, I can't remember what her name was. But yeah, okay, let's just have a look here. Check this out. So here's a line of sight. They're showing a bullet entering this person. And also, it bounces off the railing here on the far right side of the screen okay so this is suggesting the potential of a second shooter on the water tower okay this is getting crazy people people here all these people mentioned seeing someone on the water tower literally stating they saw somebody up there well 
What else? All right. Was there something else here in this part to mention? All right, let's read it. Uh, I just talked to a well-positioned source in the Secret Service community who confirmed reports of agency intelligence gathering that supports a theory that rally shooter Thomas Crooks was likely planning to take out people in the crowd in a mass Vegas-style shooting and wasn't initially planning to attempt to assassinate Trump. So they're saying he was just going there to shoot some people up. And he wasn't planning on killing Trump. He changed his mind after he was scrambling to escape police and climbed onto the roof. Oh, yeah, so they... They somehow they extracted this information from the corpse of crooks and clearly an attempt to save themselves. When he saw that nobody was on the roof and he had a clean shot at Trump, he went for it. No one can completely get inside the shooter's head because he's dead, but high level sources within the Secret Service are convinced that he was planning to shoot at the crowd because he used his rangefinder on the ground first and he was trying to escape police when he scrambled onto the roof. I'm also hearing there was no ladder and that he assembled the gun from parts in his backpack on the roof. Maybe. All right, here we have the Hulkster. What did he have to say? And that is the ultimate question. All right, so let's go back. Uh, this is something else very interesting, so forget that. Boom, get rid of that. All right, so this is something interesting. This is the financial side of things, okay? Um, a company called Austin Private Wealth LLC shorted 12 million shares of DJT, okay? This is Trump's Truth Social account, okay, or a, a stock, right? And it's cost a fortune. This is like the most expensive stock to short. And shorting something, it's called... Uh, a put option basically say I think this thing is going down so I'm gonna buy a bunch of these shares at the current price or at that price and I'm gonna sell them at this price and if it gets down to that price then I'll cash in and we'll cover the difference all right so that's the deal there well they have around 100 bill or 1 billion in assets under management and this is by far the largest put placed according to a source the trade represents 60% of total shares and over 16% of the float of the stock, given the fact that Trump owns 60% of the company. This is a giant bet when you consider their total AUM, but what? But there's more. Okay, right. So whatever, it confuses, blah, blah, blah. So what happened? They came out and uh, it disappeared on Monday. So the fund betting against DJT and Rumble as well just happened to make double mistake before the assassinated attempt is saying it was a filing error. It never really happened. So the SEC, which showing that Austin Private Wealth shorted a large number of shares of Trump Media Technology Group, was incorrect. We immediately amended it as soon as we learned of the area. Oh, oops! Just happened to short it, and if he died, we would have made so much money. Guess who owns most of the shares in this? Vanguard, George Soros, uh, BlackRock, you know? Buys. Come on. Seriously. We deeply regret this error, but what happened if it cashed in? Oh, <laughs> well, oops. Yeah, there you go. There you have it. So there is uh, the water tower in place. Stay tuned for that. It hasn't really been getting much coverage. There was one dude who came on and stated uh, to CNN that it possibly could be an issue. I don't know. Uh, stay tuned. Check it out because it's all up in the gaff. This is not over yet. One uh, theory I have is that they're allowing all this information to flood in. They talk about, we must stop disinformation and misinformation. Well, in this stage, they want it. They want it to get muddy, mucky, and dirty. And likely, Cheadle will fall on her sword. She will take the blame of all this. All the fallback will come on DEI in years to come and whatever. Or the House of Cards will fall and the truth will come out. All right, Sigma Tiger, signing out. Enjoy your weekend, people. TGIF.